All of us have been sensitized for years to the fact that bleeding complications in patients undergoing PCI produce bad outcomes. Now in Jack, researchers report on whether there have been any temporal trends in bleeding complications among patients with PCI done electively for unstable angina and for ST elevation MI. Using the CATH PCI registry, they looked at post-PCI bleeding rates from 2005 to 2009 in a total of about 1.5 million patients and tried to determine what, if anything, caused any changes over time. There is good news in this report. The researchers found an approximate 20% reduction in post-PCI bleeding, and interestingly, the radial approach remained low at less than 3%, and closure device use increased only marginally from 44 to 49%. However, in response clearly to clinical reports, it appears that bivalrudin use increased from 17% to 30%, whereas any heparin and glycoprotein inhibition use decreased from 41 to 28%. Also interesting is that there was a significant 6 to 8% per year reduction in annual bleeding risk in unstable angina, non-STEMI, and elective PCI, but not in ST elevation MI. Antithrombotic strategies were associated with roughly half of the reduction in annual bleeding risk. What does that teach us? First, we are in fact reacting to bleeding complications and reducing them. That's good news. Seems we are indeed teachable. The nearly 20% reduction in post-PCI bleeding over time is largely due to temporal changes in antithrombotic strategies. The researchers point out that there is still much more for us to do. Further reductions in bleeding complications may be possible as bleeding avoidance strategies evolve, especially in ST elevation MI. I'm Peter Block, and this is a CardiSource Heart Minute.